Hello everyone and welcome back guys to round 20 of season 4 of the F1 2020 My Team Karima where today we're here back for the Mexican Grand Prix. Now obviously if you missed out on the US Grand Prix that went live a couple of days ago I would definitely definitely recommend going back and checking out. Of course there will be spoilers in just a moment but thank you all as well as always for the continued support on the channel. You know we're slowly but surely making our way up towards 14,000 subscribers so obviously if you can help me get one step closer to that it would be greatly, greatly appreciated as well. But yes, yeah, spoilers, of course, then in 3, 2, 1, now. So, heading to the US Grand uh, the Mexican Grand Prix. Three races to go. Three points separate myself and Lewis Hamilton, who currently leads the way at the top of the championship. After a last lap move made by our teammate last time out, yeah, the point swung in his favour once more. There is first race victory uh, since Singapore there. As you can see, we've had a win at sixth place and a second in recent weeks but maybe just maybe fastest lap points are actually going to win us this world championship this year i mean we've got a lot more than hamilton at this point three four uh nine thirteen fastest laps uh, to hamilton's three at the moment there so yeah we will be obviously 10 13 points back uh had we not had the fastest lap bonus points as well there but yeah heading though to the mexican grand prix this weekend a track that suited us quite well in the past. Season 2, I think it was. We managed to complete a last to first around this Grand Prix circuit. And yeah, maybe... Well, hopefully we won't be starting at the back this weekend. But hopefully we can still win. We desperately need it if we want to keep this fight up with Hamilton. Let's do this thing. So here we are then back at the Autodroma Hermanos Rodriguez, round 20 of the Formula 1 season. As always, and as always, uh, we head back out in to qualifying here for the Mexican Grand Prix. Like I've sort of mentioned in the past, qualifying isn't the absolute be all and end all around this circuit. You know, it, it's certainly no Monaco uh, around this race circuit. Obviously, you can make a lot of overtakes down that huge front straightaway. And if you can't make off a move there, you certainly can down this next huge straightaway in sector two but yeah as always they're going straight out on a set of mediums george russell the first man there on a 13 that is definitely not quick enough at the moment if q1 times are any indicator to be going but you know i think on the softs we want to be looking at close to an 11 this weekend as you can see bottas there does a 13 zero so maybe maybe it actually is high 12s i can't quite remember exactly i mean we'll find out in just a moment when we come towards the end of this lap Maybe we need to be aiming for sort of a mid-13, using a lot of curb through sector two, but we just might keep it sort of on the white lines as we head now down in towards find a couple of corners of the lap, in towards the stadium section. I can never get this section of circuit hooked up particularly well on the F1 games. Getting a little bit of wheel spin as we head now through the final corner. Charlotte Leclerc does a 12 7 so yeah, Mercedes were definitely way off the pace there. We do a 13-7. So everyone's struggling at the moment, but between the Alpha Towers, probably won't be good enough for Q3. And just like Kota last time out, it didn't take long uh, before we find ourselves outside the top 10 in the dying stages of the session. You can see George Russell as well really, really struggling down in P13. So yeah, not too sure what's going on with that. But yeah, we'll have to go out for another run then, right towards the end of this qualifying session. 40 seconds on the clock as we head over the start-finish line. We don't need to find a huge amount of time. But, I mean, now this run is basically just getting ready for Q3, who should be where we make up a lot of time on our Q, our original Q2 run. That's not going to help us, though. Huge water understeer as we head out in towards this very sort of weird DRS zone around the circuit. Never really sort of felt it's done much use on the F1 games, but back into the stadium section once again. Just trying to keep the front end a bit more planted, trying to keep the rear in check. As well as through the final corner we go. We are going to be over a second up at the end of this run. About one and a quarter seconds up. A 12-4. That's going to leapfrog us right towards the front of the field. It's P2 at the end of our Q2 run there. So rather happy with that. So there we go then. Having a look at the final results. We're actually quickest again. Uh, so yeah, very, very surprised by that. Six thousandths clear of Valtteri Bottas in P3. They're ahead of George Russell. But Hamilton looking like the quickest man uh, so far this weekend there. Verstappen in fifth ahead of Sainz, Albon, Charles Leclerc, Esteban Ocon and Lance Stroll rounding out the top ten there. And yeah, neither Alpha Tauri finishing up inside the top ten there. So not ideal for those guys. Obviously that big, big battle 
going on between McLaren, Ferrari and AlphaTauri for P4 overall. Won't be decided this weekend, but every point matters for those three teams. Our Q3 run then, let's see if we can try and snatch away pole position from our teammate Lewis Hamilton at the final corner. Ready to start our first of two flying laps. Yeah, let's just wait and see. I would love to try and get an 11 in in this session, but yeah, so far Hamilton has been the quicker of the two of us throughout the entirety of this weekend, practically touching 220 miles an hour in towards the first corner there with no slipstream or anything like that. Lance Stroll sets the fastest time so far. A 1.13.8, that definitely won't be good enough for me. Incredibly surprised if it was good enough for pole position, unless it absolutely starts bucketing it down almost instantly. And yeah, that won't be pole uh, for Lance Stroll there, as Sainz goes even faster, heading in towards Sector 2. Bit of a lock-up on the front inside wheel, but we do get the car slowed down nice and tidily. Nonetheless, we're really trying to use up all the curbing around this circuit. Charles Leclerc, new fastest time on the board. Can we actually hit the apex through there? Almost. A lot better than we've done in any other session. Hamilton at 12-4. So our team is really ramping up the pace as we get towards the end of our first lap. Hamilton has now set the benchmark roughly about the same time as we hit in Q2. But the times are only going to continue coming down through the final corner. Felt like a pretty hooked up lap. At the final turn, it's going to be a 12-1. Very, very happy with that one early on in the session. That has definitely thrown down the gauntlet for our teammate. Last chance then to try and get in a good qualifying lap. And it's actually Max Verstappen for Ferrari. What well, almost feels out of nowhere this weekend. Suddenly onto pole position. Ferrari have certainly found a lot of pace in that car in recent weeks. And yeah, Verstappen so far about a tenth quicker than myself. He's always gone well around the Mexican Grand Prix circuit. So maybe this is Ferrari's chance to shine once more in this season. We need a good hooked up lap. Everyone else coming towards the end of their runs as well. So we should get a rough idea of if anyone goes quicker as we don't get a particularly good run through there, actually. That wasn't too shabby in the end. We're, we were momentarily up on our previous lap, but we're still there or thereabouts as we head down in towards Sector 2. Nice and brave on the brakes. Get the car rotated over. So we try to avoid the wheel spin, avoid the locking up. Still holding on to P2 at the moment as we are fractionally up once more as we head down in through the S's. Try and make sure we keep it nice and tidy, taking a lot of curb there. Just lifting off to get the front end rotated through. That felt like a good run. Now we're about a tenth and a half up. So maybe this could be a 111 right in the dying stages of qualifying here for the Mexican Grand Prix circuit. Purple through sector two. Come on, keep it tidy, keep the nose planted. Final turn, that's a lot of curb through there. We were a bit brave on that one, but we aren't gonna be up. At the end of the lap, a 1.11.875. That should be pole position. Thank you very much. And with qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Mr. Monaco, Hamilton and Max Verstappen. Goodbye for now then, but we're really just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Well, it was a good job then that we were able to improve on our previous lap because Hamilton and George Russell went quicker in the end. So if we hadn't have improved, we would have found ourselves P4 on the grid at ready for the Mexican Grand Prix there. But yeah, Max Verstappen, nine tenths quicker than his teammate Charles Leclerc at the end of qualifying there, able to split the Mercs and the 2-2 two two Motorsport cars at the end of qualifying there. Sainz up in sixth place as well. A good job done by him for McLaren there. Uh, McLaren there ahead of Albon uh, for a Red Bull there. Ocon and Stroll round out the top ten as well there. But yeah, very, very tightly bunched pack. The run down towards turn one is going to be critical. Let's do this thing then here from the Mexican Grand Prix. Here we go then. It's time to race in Mexico City, a place which gave Honda their first ever victory back in 1965. American Richie Ginther won from third on the grid. And what are the Honda powered cars this year? Well, Red Bull have been going strong here in recent seasons, so can they keep that record going today? At 2,285 meters above sea level, the thin air of the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez poses a unique challenge not just to a driver's skill, but to the efficiency of their engines as well. 17 corners make up a lap of this 2.6 mile circuit, and you can expect incredible speeds in excess of 220 miles per hour, and overtaking two into the hard braking zones of turns one and turn four. 
Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. They need 10th or better to ensure they stay in contention for the championship. Anything outside that, and their fate's no longer in their hands. The key now will be to keep in the right mindset. We've seen time and again that things go wrong if you just try and do the minimum. Not necessarily because of the pressure, but because it's different to your usual approach. They'll need to avoid that and stay focused today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Mr. Monaco lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Valtteri Bottas, and Sainz, Leclerc, Albon, Ocon, and Lance Stroll, Ricardo, Perez, Daniel Kvyat, and Norris, Gasly, Raikkonen, Jordan King, and Kevin Magnussen, Latifi, Matsushita, Giovinazzi, and Nick De Vries. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Just three races left. You can still win the driver's title, but you need a strong performance. Come on, let's give it our best shot. Well, Jeff might be absolutely right this weekend here in Mexico. We need another brilliant result here today if we want to try and drag this title fight on to the bitter end. But Crofty saying we need 10th to stay in the battle? Not too sure where he's got his maths from uh, heading into this weekend there. But we're already on the grid, ready for the Mexican Grand Prix. 36 laps ahead of us. It really does feel like quite a slugfest around at this circuit. Obviously, we can afford to go very, very low on the fuel, as always here. I'm going to underfuel by three whole laps, trying to go aggressive on the strategy. But we're going to go soft, medium, soft this weekend to see if we can try and drag a little bit more out of the car. Uh, yeah, we'll go a lap 11 and then lap 26 and then try to take those other tyres to the end. But yeah, like I said, though, uh, strategy going to be very, very critical this weekend. Getting a good run down towards turn one as well. Uh, could be absolutely key here. Obviously, if we, get run if we get any front wing damage or anything like that, we could have some issues this race. But ready then, on the grid, round 20 of 22. Three points in it, three races to go, five red lights we're waiting on, and it is lights out, and away we go for the Mexican Grand Prix. Off to a decent start, I think. No, not a particularly brilliant one there. It's Hamilton. Look at the traction he gets. Verstappen gives us a little bit of contact as well. The hand of rage comes up. As we head down in towards turn one there. As we've been absolutely swamped by everyone. In towards the first corner. Just trying to keep the front wing nice and tidy. But Verstappen, both Mertz, Russell and maybe Charles Leclerc have all snuck past us. Off the start there as well of course as our teammate Lewis Hamilton. In this Grand Prix there. So it really has not been ideal. We were just on the outside. Could never sort of find our space. In towards the first couple of corners there. And Verstappen always going to try and take any opportunity. Talking about any opportunity. We almost get back around the outside of Sainz. As we head in towards sector two there. But this has not been a good start. As you can see already on the minimap. Hamilton streaking away at the front of the field there. But we're still stuck behind the McLaren. Both Mercedes and the Ferrari as well. There is maybe Ferrari are finally back. Ready to start a challenge in season five. Can we get a bit of a run on Sainz? No, he goes defensive on us. In towards the stadium section. Maybe get the cut back. Not quite. Oh, Sainz breaking very, very early. In towards the hairpin there through the stadium section. But yeah, not ideal for us. But end of that one though, Hamilton leads the way ahead of Verstappen. George Russell, Valtteri Bottas, Carlos Sainz, myself, Charles Leclerc, Esteban Ocon, Albon, and Lance Stroll there. Now can we get a run on Carlos Sainz as we head back down in towards turn one there? Speed to well over 215 miles an hour as we head in towards the first turn. We think about it. But not able to make anything work just yet. And now this race is going to be quite a long one. Heading out of the final corner. Lap 2. Hamilton sets up 15-6 as we get a little bit fishtaily at the final turn. We only lose 6 tenths that lap. But now, Sainz nowhere near the slipstream of Bottas in front of him. So hopefully we should be able to get a run on the McLaren back down towards turn 1. Yeah, we should be comfortably ahead in towards the braking zone there. And it was a valiant effort from Sainz. It's not over just yet, actually. As he tries the Spaniard, tries to keep the nose up the inside. But we do make the move one. We don't really want to be spending our race messing around with McLarens here. But yeah, Hamilton though, still a long way at the road. But hopefully, if Verstappen's going to keep the Mercedes at bay, he can do us a bit of a favour here. But DRS has now been enabled as well. So overtaking should be a little bit easier. New fast lap of the Grand Prix of 15-4. So we've definitely still got good pace in the car. But yeah, we've still just got to try and carve our way back through the traffic. 
for, uh, looks like Verstappen and George Russell going side by side towards the first corner. See who's going to come out on top in this one. Verstappen holds on for now. Bottas really struggling through the final couple of corners of the lap. So maybe if we can try and get some sort of opportunity on the Merc. Then you can just see everyone so strong at the final corner on the traction there. We really can't just do anything to try and combat it as we head back down here towards the one. We've definitely got a bit of better top end speed. And the guys around us, they're 222 miles an hour. As again, Russell tries to look past for Sappen. We go for a big lockup in towards the first corner. Ocon seems to have issues in his Renault. That's really not going to affect my day all too much, I'll be honest. As Verstappen again holds on, but this time around, Russell looks to the inside. Bottas trying to find something as well. We might be able to have a look at the inside of Bottas in all of this. Really going for an optimistic move there. But catching the fin off guard as he tried to make a move at the inside of someone else. Don't you line up a move? Russell does get around the outside, though. Of Max Verstappen as we head down in towards sector two there. So a critical move for the Mercedes man as now hopefully for him. He's just going to try and romp away as we head in towards the final sector of the lap. But obviously remember how good a battle we had with George Russell last time out in Cota. But, I mean, at the moment we've still got a world championship to fight for. George Russell, this is not going to be his year. On the other hand, Bottas still technically within the chance, but those chances very, very much fading at the moment. As our chance of a win fading when we get moments like that all too often in this Grand Prix. Now, how good is Max Verstappen's top end speed? As we head back down towards Turn 1, we are gaining rather rapidly on the Ferrari. Can we go for anything? Not quite close enough in towards Turn 1, but maybe at the first couple of corners if we can stick close, actually get some good power down. On the exit, let's see, can we now get a run on Max Verstappen's Ferrari? The Dutchman probably going to go defensive, there we go. Go late on the brakes, slam on the anchors at the 100 meter board, right on the outside, park it on the apex, and remember to P3. George Russell has, well, he won't have any DRS on anyone at the final turn. We should still be within DRS range of the Mercedes as we set a new fast lap of the Grand Prix. Three quarters of a second back though. As we head into the DRS zone, we are going to make big, big gains, of course, down in towards Turn 1. Well, I don't think it's quite going to be enough. Might just have to go for a similar sort of move as we did on Verstappen a lap ago. And just try. Oh, it's George there. Very, very slow through the first couple of corners. Can we do what we did to Max and get around the outside? Or will we now be able to have a look to the inside? Down in towards the next game. Bottas, uh, sorry, George even, I should say, going defensive. But we'll pull off the same move as we did to Verstappen a lap ago. And now we're up to P2 again, and now we can set our eyes on our teammate. We really spent a lot of time in this early stages, though. And we should have been battling with Hamilton. We're now three and a half seconds back, with seven laps less to get back round him. Oh, end of lap 10. Hamilton into the pit lane. I was actually going to make the call at the end of this one, but no, we're going to have to stay out, obviously, one lap longer, like originally planned there. But yeah, we were a man on a mission over those last couple of laps, trying to close in on our teammate. But is he going to come out in clear air? Once again in the Scrum Prix, that is of course the next question on our minds. I think he's going to come out just behind one of the Red Bulls. I think he's just about going to stay ahead. No, he's not. Of the Alpha Tauri and the McLaren there. So he might struggle behind them this lap. But yeah, we need a good in lap now. So we can get into the pits nice and tidily. Through the final corner, into the pits. I was tempted, honestly, after that to go one lap longer in this race. Oh, <laughs> Only just getting the car slowed down into the pit lane there, locking up on both of the front wheels there into the pits. Yeah, we should come in still nice and tidily. Hamilton has been held up a bit by the McLaren and the Alpha Tauri on this lap. As a 1.9 second stop, the team have been on absolute fire with those in recent weeks. Sergio Perez, homeboy, is going to be out now in the lead of the Grand Prix, but there flies past Hamilton once again as we have back down out onto the racetrack. But yeah, Hamilton still leads the way. Then he's on another set of softs in this Grand Prix. So I'm very much expecting him to pull away a bit over the next few laps. But then obviously we hopefully are going to be quicker at the end of the race. Shaping up hopefully to be another cracker. But safety cars could quite easily ruin it for one of us. And just like that, Hamilton starting to romp away again. A 1.14.7 at the end of that lap. We need to try and keep that in mind. As Perez has done a fantastic job. I mean, he's always a man that can keep his tyres in good nick, but 13 laps now he's going to be doing on those softs. The man is a beast. 
just about reaching the halfway stage then of this Grand Prix and this stint so far has been very much sort of ebbing and flowing between Hamilton and myself. He'd opened up the gap to about three seconds at one point. You can see over the last couple of laps, so it's starting to come back down again to like 2.3. So I think if we're near him, by the time he makes his pit stop, obviously, he then should have much fresher rubber for a while. I'm probably going to make quite big gains on us, but the likes of Russell and Bottas have gone with the same strategy as ourselves at the moment. We're hanging on in. However, a little bit worried about fuel still. We're still a lap and a half under, and we're halfway through this race. Strategy is available on the MFD. Team recommending a new strategy. They're saying now come in lap 27 onto a set of the softs, so they want us to go quite long on these mediums. Still, clearly we're keeping them in good nick, whilst Hamilton's on the other hand, very, very much starting to hit the end of their shelf life at the moment. 1.4 now, the gap between us down to. I think Hamilton's probably going to be in the end of the next one. But yeah, at the moment, though, our pace actually looking very, very strong. These mediums seem to be getting into a good groove. And it's probably why the team wants us to stay on them for as long as possible. Is Hamilton in now? No, he goes one more. There we go, end of lap 20. Hamilton... Oh, God, I almost followed him into the pit lane there. That wasn't quite what I had in mind, but Hamilton into pits. So these next few laps are probably going to make or break our Grand Prix this weekend here. We need to hope that Hamilton comes out in a bit of traffic and we just need to try and keep our head down and get more good laps under our belt before we pit. I'm probably still going to dive in the end of 26, but we'll see how well the tyres last. Hamilton, though, has looking like he's going to be out here in a lot of clear air, so not good for us, but he's still inside the top five, so we should be able to monitor the gap. About three laps then before we're going to dive into the pit lane and Hamilton has already taken about two and a half seconds out of us since he came out of the pit lane. We've got Williams just in front of us as well, so hopefully they don't really give us too many issues. As so yeah, cars starting to go lap down in this Grand Prix. Blue flag, blue flag, come on Giovinazzi, get out of the way man, in your Williams. Don't need to lose any more time sat in the dirty air at the final corner. Can we get the power down? I mean he's been... Under warning for blue flags for about half a lap now, so hopefully he's going to actually move out of the way rather shortly. But yeah, Hamilton behind us though. Gap still about 17 seconds as Giovinazzi does finally slot out of the way there. But yeah, this might get a bit messy on this lap as Gio yeah, keeps the nose a little bit closer than I'd like in towards the first corner. You always get that moment of doubt when you're trying to lap someone as Latifi might make a better job of it. Down in towards the next couple of corners. Yes, he does. Thank you very much. And I'm not too sure if we're going to get close enough to freeze to do anything. But we are going to dive in the end of this one. But this, yeah, just not quite what I need at this stage of the race. In towards the final sector of the lap. Nick de Freeze is definitely starting to cost us a little bit of time. There was a bit of a lock-up on the inside wheel. That shouldn't cost us all too much. But yeah, Hamilton, though, has taken a good two seconds out of us over this stint. Was a little bit more at one point. He seems to have struggled a bit over the last couple of laps. Nice and tidily into the pits this time round. No locking up, no drama, nothing like that. And yeah, in onto a set of these soft compounded tyres to go to the end of this Grand Prix. It's going to be interesting to see if we actually close back up to the Williams. I don't think we will before the end of this race. But what will the gap to Hamilton be? A slow stop, three seconds after a couple of absolute worldies recently. Hamilton's obviously going to fly right back past us. And we are going to be about four seconds back. There are there about three and a half, four seconds. Heading out the pits, yeah, just under four as we head down in towards cell one. Ten laps to go. Four seconds to close up. Hopefully we'll get fastest lap in that time as well. We need to get our head down and try the impossible. Lap 28, talking about lap traffic. It looks like both Hamilton and myself are going to have to deal with one of the Alfa Romeos getting in the way as we head back down in towards turn one. I'm going to guess that's Matsushita. But yeah, Hamilton will probably get past him here, I'd be inclined to think. We might get stuck through the middle sector. Yellow flags out as well, as we head through the final couple of corners of lap 28. A late race retirement, I think. Is it for an Alpha Towery? I think it's an Alpha Towery. Why are we going through? I can't work out who it is. Yep, there we go. One of the Alpha Towerys out of this Grand Prix. There, as we set a 14-8 Gasly out, and we've got a safety car with just seven laps to go. The safety car has been deployed here in Mexico. What is this going to do to the strap? I'm tempted just to dive it onto another fresh set of the soft compounded tyres here. These ones are already fairly worn in the few laps we've done. It's just a case of whether we can stay out ahead of the Ferrari of Verstappen. We are going to dive it in. 
may as well take the gamble in this race and try to have a little bit better rubber between now and the end into the pits we come and instantly looking at the gap this didn't seem like the most sensible idea in the world there Verstappen's going to fly past us Bottas as well and probably Russell as long as we are ahead of the Red Bulls hopefully this isn't completely game over 2.7 and we've messed up the pit exit as well one of the Mercedes though Russell actually dived it into the pits so where are we going to come back out? We need a clean getaway. Don't want to change the downforce. Want to stay out ahead of Charles Leclerc. Have we done so? No, we have not. This has not been a good call. Down to P8 in this Grand Prix with just a few laps to go. We are going to have to work our butt off just to get back to P2. Never mind. Don't try and win this. What on earth is George Russell doing? George Russell has just overtaken half the field and crashed into his teammate under safety car. Uh, George, George... What? What on earth was that? I'm not too sure what I've just seen, but I think George Russell has just decided, you know what, I don't actually want to be in this race anymore, and just completely rammed another car and pulled over to the side of the racetrack under safety car. Surely that would be ban worthy in real Formula One. Surely. Well anyway, after whatever that was from George Russell, the safety car is coming in at the end of lap 32. Four laps to go. And we are going to have to slice and dice our way back through the field here. We need to be absolutely on it straight from the restart. We should be a lot quicker than all of the cars ahead of us. But that never makes it a guarantee in Formula 1. Hamilton is going to lead the way. Charles Leclerc very, very slow heading in towards the final corner. Can we try and get a run, a run out? Perez into the pits okay, for whatever reason. We don't get any traction out of the final corner. We're going to have Daniel Ricciardo trying it on as we head down towards Turn 1. The same can be set for Lance Stroll. So this has is an absolute nightmare of a restart for us. Stroll's going to get the run. Try to have a look to the outside, but we've just got a bit more top-end speed as we head down in towards the first corner once again. But a big train of cars behind our teammate Lewis Hamilton here. Take as much curb as we dare through the first couple of corners. But Stappen still up in second place here. Could he suddenly get an opportunity in this Grand Prix that he never thought was going to arrive? And Ferrari's first win in, well, God knows how long in Formula 1. We get the switch back, though, on Charles Leclerc in towards Sector 2. And we need to take every opportunity we possibly can like that between now and the end of the Grand Prix. So we muscle our way past the rest of the traffic. Next up, though, the Spaniard of Sainz once more. Oh, Sainz again, very, very slow in towards the final couple of corners. There is a bit of contact on the entry, but somehow we sneak around the outside of the McLaren driver. Can we now get a run on Albon at the final corner? Three laps to go. We're already at three spots. I see one of them, Sergio Perez. Again, no idea why for, uh, Racing Point decided to dive him in at the end of that lap because he was on for a really good result in his home Grand Prix and what's been quite a disappointing season for Racing Point but all over the back of Albon as we head back down through the first couple of corners you can see just how much extra grip and momentum everything like that we're able to maintain through those first couple of turns everyone else on older hearts or older mediums even I should say up the inside of the Red Bull and it's another textbook move and we're back a bit of P4 this race not over yet with two and a half laps to go and Verstappen really keeping up with Lewis Hamilton at the end of this Grand Prix. Two to go as we head out of the final corner, but hopefully we're about to try and sneak back past the feed. New fast lap of the Grand Prix, a 13-9 this late on in the race there. They're very happy with that one. DRS now has, has of course, been enabled once more, but have we got the run on Bottas? Obviously, he's got a lot of slipstream from Verstappen. It's going to have to be a late lunge at the inside. The Finn having absolutely none of it, though. We have to back out of that one. As Verstappen locked up just in front, can we now get the traction out of Turn 3, down in towards Turn 4, try and go for another move on Valtteri Bottas here. Send it up the inside again, and we'll do the same move as we did to Albon a lap ago. And we are now up into P3 of this Grand Prix. Verstappen will probably get the DRS on Hamilton onto the final lap, but we hopefully are going to get the DRS on Max Verstappen in towards Sector 3. If we can make a move down in towards the final sector of the lap, then the win could still be on. It's just look at how much extra momentum we're able to maintain through there. Verstappen, he does get the DRS, but we're going to be so quick in towards the final corners. We make a tiny bit of contact, but we do get right around the outside 
of the Dutchman, and now there is just no more cars separating myself and Hamilton, even if we don't win this. We're back up to where we should be in this Grand Prix, but out of the final corner, do we get the DRS on Hamilton? I don't think we have. This, this time round, there is to see Hamilton romping away. No, we do get the DRS. So that's going to allow us to get even closer to our teammate as we head back down in towards Turn 1. After a huge strategy blunder, could this suddenly all work out for us? At the end of the Mexican Grand Prix, heading through the first sector, look how much we close up on Lewis Hamilton there, trying to get the traction out of Turn 3 there, down towards Turn 4. Once again, we've got the DRS on our teammate. Can we go for anything or we think about it? But just not quite brave enough that time round on the brakes. Can we get the cutback? In towards the middle sector, just a bit too much wheel spin, and Hamilton slams the door shut once more here. This is not over just yet. Obviously, Hamilton robbed us of a race victory last time at Dakota in the last lap of that Grand Prix. Can we do the same to our teammate? Can we return the favour as we head back through sector two? We made a move on Charlotte Leclerc last time round through there. We can move to the outside of our teammate Hamilton in towards the final sector. He keeps the nose on the inside, but I think we've done it. We move to the inside, go defensive in towards the hairpin here. They can see all the confetti's out, but Hamilton and I still side by side as we head in towards the final corner. Hamilton tries to park it on the apex. We get the switch back on him, and I think we've done it. It's going to be so close to the line. No, we don't. Hamilton takes it at the line. I have never had a finish like that on F1 2020. That's a spectacular victory then, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the driver's championship. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? Well, for me, it's got to be Lewis Hamilton. The multiple world champion may be the boring choice at this point, but you can't argue that he's a driver deserving of his reputation. The Constructors' Championship may be a foregone conclusion at the moment, but regardless, let's look at the standings. Meanwhile, Ferrari have improved their position. A strong weekend from them as they fight their way towards the top. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, what can I say? What can we do to win a race against Lewis Hamilton when it comes down to the wire there? 14 thousandths of a second when we cross the finish line. If I'm not mistaken, that is the closest finish. We've had on F1 2020 so far there. Hamilton, though, does once again sneak away the race victory there. Pole position, fastest lap, but no dubs for ourselves. Unfortunately, again, means that Hamilton pulls away another six points in the Drivers' World Championship there. Our teammate, yeah, nine points clear now at the top of the standings there, but fair play to him. Did everything right this weekend and just held on right at the end there. Kept hold of just that little bit more ERS, which allowed him to get the run around the outside out of the final corner there. But Max Verstappen... Definitely my driver of the day there. Ferrari finally seems to be making a resurgence at the end of this season there. And I'm excited to see what they can do in Season 5 as well there. Bottas in fourth though, ahead of Albon, Sainz, Leclerc, Ricardo, Stroll and Danny Kvyat. Rounding out the top ten there for Alfa Tauri. Just ahead of both of the Renault cars there. Lando Norris and you can see Magnussen, De Vries, Jordan King, Latifi, Matsushita, Giovinazzi and Sergio Perez. The last man to make it to the chequered flag there with George Russell. The weirdest DNF I've ever seen, but a DNF nonetheless, as well as Pierre Gasly there. Did he get anything on the race director uh, for that one? We got a couple of warnings. Uh, George Russell, collision with safety car, severe collision with uh, Perez, and then a mechanical failure. So he didn't even get DQ'd for it. 
as well there. Again, the strangest thing I think I've ever seen on F1 2020 there at the end of the day. But yeah, championship-wise though, like I said, Hamilton now 9 clear at the top of the standings. We need to perform an absolute miracle in the last couple of races of the year. We basically need to win them both uh, with two rounds to go here. But it is officially a two-horse race. Match 2 and 2, well, 2 and 2 Motorsport will officially be three-time double champions in the world of Formula 1. It will be one of our cars that takes the championship crown once again there. But the swappers down the field, though. Sainz now up into seventh place. They're ahead of Verstappen as Gasly gets jumped back down to P9 there. Four points between those three drivers as well. Certainly going to be a brilliant battle to watch towards the end of the season there. Charles Leclerc as well gets the jump on Lando Norris as, yeah, Ferrari really seem to be up in the ante towards the end of this season there. No other movers in the Drivers' World Championship, but constructors-wise, though, Ferrari and McLaren tied now on 150 points apiece there. I think Ferrari are looking like the stronger team at the moment with a few races to go. But yeah, certainly going to be interesting to see what McLaren can do to try and counterbalance that as well. That Alpha Tauri seem to have pretty much solidified sixth. I think they came into this one looking like they could still get fourth. But I think that pretty much, despite a miracle, is a goner now, unfortunately. They're still ahead of Racing Point and Renault, who have both had disappointing seasons there with Haas, Williams now for a male rounding out your order still at the moment but thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless if you did enjoy do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed and yeah we will be back very very soon for round 21 it's time for the infamous interlagos circuit you guys do not want to miss the brazilian grand prix a big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.